Hey, how are you? Well, today I'm going to start building a bookcase for my daughter's room. And I want the bookcase to be up tight against the wall, but there's uh, baseboard heating running against the wall. So what I'm going to do is attach legs to the front of the cabinet and then screw the cabinet to the wall and the heat can run underneath it. I'll get started by building the legs. The cabinet has two legs in the front that measure an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And since I'm using three quarter inch stock, I'll have to glue two boards together to make each leg. I'm using a few biscuits and that's just to keep the boards from moving around during the glue up. With the legs glued up, I'll move on to the face frame, which is the front of the cabinet. I've already cut my boards and I'll use a pocket hole jig to put the face frame together. Okay, well it's a new day and I let the legs set up overnight and now I'm gonna clamp the legs and run them through the sander and then I'll start working on the sides of the bookcase. Now if you're wondering what's going on with my eye here, I got a few bee stings on Sunday and I mentioned that in today's video, my Tuesday video, and uh, it looks worse than it is. It really doesn't hurt, it just looks swollen. And uh, I think by Friday it should be all cleared up. The sides of the bookcase will be made out of three quarter inch birch plywood and each side is ten and a half inches deep or wide. And because I didn't want to have to carry a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood, I first had the lumber yard rip a full sheet for me at 21 and a half inches. Now it'll be a lot easier to handle. Before I rip the sides, I'll cross cut the sheet to a rough length using my cross cut sled. I've cut the sides to length and width, and now I'm going to use a rabbit bit in the router to cut a notch out in the back of the sides to accept the back. And I've clamped the two sides together to give me a wider surface, which will help keep the router more stable. I'm building the bookcase using the pocket hole system and I'll attach the face frame to the legs first and then I'll attach the sides. Before I attach the face frame to the legs, I want to taper the bottom of the leg just a little bit. So I'll measure up from the bottom six and three quarters of an inch and mark a line and then measure in from the outside of the leg one inch and then use a straight edge to connect those lines.
I'm attaching the face frame to the leg with the back of the face frame flush with the back of the leg. When I attach the face frame to the leg, I attach the back of the face frame flush with the leg. And there's just a faint line here, and now when I attach the side of the cabinet, I'll hold the inside of the side at that line. I use vice grips to attach temporary legs to the back of the cabinet so the cabinet will stand on its own and I can continue to work on it. Now I'm trimming out the inside of the face frame with a little bead molding. I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood for the bottom of the cabinet, so I'll use a piece of scrap of the same material, hold it flush with the top of the bead molding, and trace a line. Then I'll rest a framing square on the cleat that I just attached, trace a line on the sides, and attach another cleat. I'm using wood glue and inch and a quarter nails to attach the cleats. I've already attached the solid wood brace at the top of the cabinet, and now I'll need to do the same at the bottom. Before I attach the bracing to the cabinet, I'm gonna soften up this hard edge on the inside with a small round over bit in the router. This bookcase is going to have six adjustable shelves in it, so the next step is to drill the holes for the adjustable shelf pins. I'm drilling the holes for the adjustable shelves with a jig that I made here in the shop, and it works great, the only problem is the jig isn't as long as the cabinet is tall, so what I need to do is mark a line then I'll move the whole jig up. The important thing is not to get confused and accidentally flip the jig over or something like that because if you make a mistake here, well, that would be a real problem. So what I like to do is write a few notes on the jig and that helps me to just stay organized with it and make sure that I put the jig on the right side of the cabinet and facing in the right direction. Now I'm also having a problem with the pocket holes. Because I attached the 
sides of the cabinet with pocket holes. Some of my adjustable shelf pin holes are lining up where the pocket holes are, and that's forcing me to skip a space or two every once in a while, which isn't a real big deal, especially because I'm building the cabinet for myself. But if I were building this for a client, that would be a problem. Now I'm ready to make the shelves, and I want the shelves to be 10 inches deep. I'm adding three quarters of an inch to the front and the back of the shelves, so I'll rip the plywood at eight and a half inches. All the shelves are the same length, so I've set up a stop block, so I only have to measure once. I'm going to band the front and the back of the shelf with three quarter by an inch and a quarter poplar and I'm doing that because I want to cover the end grain of the plywood and I also want to add to the thickness of the shelf so it looks a little bit heavier which I think is more appropriate for this design and it also adds to the strength of the shelf and will help to keep the shelf from sagging. I'm using beadboard for the back of the cabinet and it's a good idea to measure the back of the cabinet and then lay that measurement out on the beadboard so you have the same reveal on each side of the cabinet. Now moving on to the top of the cabinet, I'm going to make that out of 3 quarter inch MDF and it's 13 and 3 quarter inches deep and I just found a piece in the plywood bin that is 14 inches deep, so that's always a good thing. Well, you probably noticed that my workshop's really pretty small, and that means that I often have to use my outfeed table as a work table. And when I'm working on a big piece like this, I find it to be really helpful to put a piece of half inch MDF on the table, and that way I can easily slide the piece around without damaging it. I'll install the cabinet with the right side tight against the wall, and so when I attach the top, I'll keep the top flush with the right leg. I've got an inch and three quarter reveal from the front of the legs and the left side. And once I finish attaching the top, I'll dress it up a bit with a small piece of crown. This is also referred to as bed molding. And while I've got the cabinet up on the table here, I'm going to add a piece of bead molding to the bottom of the face frame.
Okay, well I finished building the bookcase, but I still have a lot of work to do. I've got to fill all the nail holes and sand and prime and paint, and then eventually install the bookcase. And I'll make a video about that. And once that video is done, I'll, I'll put a link on the screen. Uh, so if you want to see how the bookcase looks finished and installed, just click on the link. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in. I'm, all right, I'm building the bookcase. I'm building the bookcase. <laughs> I'm building the bookcase. I'm building the pocket hole system, what? And what am I doing? I'm attaching the face frame, all right. I'm building this bookcase. I'm using beadboard on the back of the cabinet, and it's a good idea to take a measurement of the back of the cabinet and then lay that measurement out on your beadboard so you have the same reveal on the beadboard on <laughs> I don't know how to say that.